Hello, um, right, welcome back to part two of Damien Ribpath. Um, covered quite a lot in that first one, so uh, we're going to uh, we're going to crack on with this one. Um, we'll probably actually release this at a similar time, so to take it from there, and we'll let you know who we've got on in the next podcast at the end of this one. So, right, take it away, Wayne. Welcome back, Damien. And uh, basically, all the stuff we spoke about, the winnings team, the stuff with uh, Kenga, you know, getting into them sort of areas and the developments in other clubs. Just how important is all this stuff to the RFL? Yeah, am I right in thinking that you sort of put it somewhere in the, the funding? You have to do certain things, tick certain boxes. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think... The reality is with the RFL, obviously the national governing body of our sport. Um, and I think the reality, I think people are, I think fans from different clubs will think they favour certain clubs over other clubs and stuff like that. And actually they don't. The reality of the RFL, they know they've got 36 clubs and they know that one club's going to win the top division and one club's going to finish bottom of, of the bottom division. It, it, it is what it is. What's really, really important, and it, and it comes into structures of sports and the wider landscape, is what what other offers can we give as a community club? We've obviously got a focal point within our community and the community of, of Greater Manchester. We've got, we, we're a unique club. We we have the name from one local from one area, Swinton. We've played in Berry. We've played at Salford. We've played in Trafford. So we've got a unique unique foot, footprint as a club is that we've actually got fans and, and people don't realise this but we've actually got season ticket holders who are resident in all 10 boroughs of Greater Manchester whether they've moved from Swinton onwards or they've just used Swinton of their team of choice it, 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 it's a varying mix so obviously we resonate across a load of areas and we resonate and the RFL has um, what's called ROI pillars which is return on investment so what that is, it's, it's what you're doing in your online, what alluded to us growing our online presence. That That is recorded as, as, as a pillar. Um, what we're doing in the community, it's a pillar. So all the little things that we're doing actually resonate right across the rugby league because we're not just, a t we don't want to be just a club that, that turns out 17 fellas on a Sunday for 26 weeks a year or however le the length of the season is. We yeah. want to be more than that. And if we're more than that and we... And we are more than that. We're a family, so we're more than that. And all we're doing is sharing that family ethos around through different ways, through diversity programmes, through older people's programmes, through kids' stuff at primary schools. And we're, we're just spreading that we're, sp we're spreading that around. So we're actually growing the sport. Now, growing the sport or growing the recognition of the sport isn't just about getting kids playing. It's future coaches. It's future officials. It's future administrators. It's all the, the whole future volunteers. It's all, everything connected. And how better to do that through your iconic professional clubs that have a brand, have a name, and, and, and will grow out there. So if you look at the Wigan Warriors Foundation, it's fantastic. The Leeds Rhinos one, um, Warrington Wolves ones, the market leaders, and they're the sort of thing. So they, they connect with loads of areas. That was one of the reasons we've connected with all the community clubs, but we did it differently. We went to areas where no professional clubs are existing. So we've gone to areas where we're giving those kids focal points. So those who want to play rugby, we've now got a pathway from two clubs in Ireland, from Devon. And if their coaching staff identify there's a player who can go to the next level, then there's a phone call that comes to our coaching staff and says, can you, can you work with this young person? Can you give this kid a trial? Can you bring him up to Swinton and, and, and give him a go? Mm. So... As, and one of the things we're proud of as a club is that we're very much homegrown. We've not got five overseas players. We've got Geronimo, who looks an absolutely fantastic addition with the best name in rugby league. I don't <laughs> care what anybody says, he's the best name in rugby league. See, uh, Geronimo Doyle. As well, though, because you know, the Kenga Bus, I mean, the Kenga Bus is like one of my favourite songs. And it's you've got you've got two there, you've got two crackers. Oh, well, yeah, well, there's competition going on with the fans now. I want to know what song they come up with for Geronimo. Because I want I want to know it because I think that'll be absolutely fantastic. Geronimo Geronimo Doyle, an indig an indigenous um, American with an Irish surname. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, to be fair, there's a challenge for how, there's a challenge how diverse for can you get? Well, you know, what, what, make, what makes have we got there? But actually watching him on the training paddock, he, he, look, he, looks, he looks a bit of a gem, to be honest. He, he looks like he's a cracking player. And I'm sure he'll complement our squad really, really well. I mean, you know, we've got Butty and, all, and, and Richard and all these players who are really, really good. And I think... For the first time, what I can see in the last few years is Swinton have got genuine competition for places. Yeah. yeah. So whoever Stuart Littler picks at the weekend, there's someone chomping at the bit. Because if, if they don't have the great game or they're not at the level that's required that week, then there's someone else who can come in. So mm. that's going to raise the standard. That, again, on the pitch is raising the standards of the club. Yeah. And I think and that'll be seen. But I do think we've got some of the best names in rugby league. I do. I, I know yeah. it, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, it, it is absolutely fantastic. So, go, going back to your point, is in terms of the RFL, it's really, really important that we spread the gospel almost of, of what rugby league is. And I know people will assume that Swinton is, uh, or our club is in, is in the hotbed of rugby league. Well, it, it is and it isn't. Mm. There's a lot of people in Greater Manchester don't don't have that affinity with rugby league. And it's our job to, to, to grow that uh, and to get that there. Because as you know, when people come to Haywood Road, they always come back. Mm. It's getting them there in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said there. that. I've said it on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and once we get them there and the people will come and know, now whether people are season ticket holders, whether they decide to come three or four games a season, the but the value just as equally. Mm. You come and spend a day with it, you, you automatically one, one, become a lion. Don't you? You once a lion, always a lion. Everybody keeps telling me. Once you can get people to the game and they see the atmosphere, they see how friendly it is. You know, obviously, ideally they're into the game as well. But some people come, you know, maybe the wives, the girlfriends, some of the kids. They come because they enjoy the day out type thing. Yeah. Like you said earlier about making that day out a bigger, better thing. That can only add. And obviously, the RFL want you to take boxes do certain yeah. things in certain areas we were doing. And ideally, even on the short term, if you can get the ladies into the team, then maybe they can watch the first team. And then their families can watch the first team. You know, and it all adds up to people through the games yeah. as well, doesn't it? I mean, Which is fantastic. Yeah, you, you're correct. I mean, there's, there's, again, there's all sorts of things that are going to be rolled out as the year goes along. Mm. I'm not going to talk about on here. We will roll them out one by one. I don't want to steal all the thunder. I, I think you'll every time you see something, you're going to go, I didn't think they could do that. And I'm thinking, yeah, we can. And and th and that's the attitude we've got. It's, it's you know, we're, we're going to just move things forward as, as we're going along. And I think look, the ROI and what the RFL think is great. And, and, you know, we've dovetailed into that as a club. There's no doubt about that. You know, however, first and foremost, we're Swinton Lions. And we're doing what's best for our club. It just happens that a lot of the things that the RFL recommend are actually good for our club. Mm. And I know national governing bodies in general get dissed. They can do, oh, the RFL have made this decision or they've made that decision. But actually, when you look at a lot of the decisions that are made, it's very difficult, some of these decisions, that, especially over the length of the season, COVID stuff. It's, it's really difficult. I wouldn't swap places with them. It's really difficult to get that, to get that balance. But... Primarily, our, our, our programme is let's grow Swinton Lions. This is what we are. This Lions. I mean, the thing is the Lions brand. I was talking to someone the other week and they're going, I've never seen a lion in Swinton. And I said, yeah. yes, you have. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, the White Lion pub. And he went, oh. And I said, that's why we're calling the Lions. And because Steve's taught the history, we went back in and he, and he was explaining to him what it was. And I said, how, how it's actually an authentic suffix to our name mm. because a lot of clubs, I mean, you know, I'm not saying Leeds Rhinos or whatever. I mean, Warrington Wolves, people don't know, but on the town crest of Warrington, there's a wolf on it. Mm. And that's where that, that, where that, that's where that came about. But the reality is with the light, it's actually traditionally got changed in that, in that line pub. And we've been known the lions since forever. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've been known as lions. So it's, it's not something that's made up. It's not something that's just been attached for, for growing the game, mm. this is actually a traditional name that we're, we're pushing. And so it's almost like, one of the things they say, it's almost like going back to the future, which, so which showcasing I, what we're sorry, good at. When I, 
Sally, when I said about the art of belt ticking boxes, I didn't want to undermine that. What I'm saying, I mean, it is, it is vital in a modern sport that you have to include everybody in it. Absolutely. You have to, to do that as a modern sport, yeah. you know, whether that be areas and different sort of, obviously the ladies team, things like that. You have to be seen to be doing that. So I, I commend that. But I say the club has, has got not only the NFL telling you to the bit, you have to do them things anyway to even remotely be a successful body. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, to be fair to the RFL, they don't tell us to do anything. Mm. They don't say you must do this. They, it's never yeah. like that. It's look, we have we we go on forums and there's a there's a share of ideas across clubs, and that's unique to the sport as well. The clubs will share with each other things that we do, and you know, and and things that work in one club. My, things that might not work in other clubs, but work in one. And then, you know, we, we all bounce off with, be, with best practice. We've literally, obviously, as, as I said in the last meeting, we've come at this as, with a new board, with a new look, with a new outlook. And it's really, really important. And that's not to say any of the previous administrations, you know, I, I mean, the, the, each steadily have grown the club. We're going to, basically, we're taking it to the next level. Yeah. We're going to the next level with this. Because, one, the heritage is there to do it. We're not, I mean, God forbid, I don't want to speak of any club, but we've had a club that's come for three years, thrown millions of pounds at it, now been booted out of the league. It's yeah. never happened to us. No. no. You know what I mean? You know, it's never happened. It's never happened to Swinson, that. And and the thing is, and, 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 and other things, we're, you know, we're there and we've got that core support, which is pretty solid. Mm. Great. Now let's grow that. Let's let's grow it. Let's let let. So, for example, if every one of you, every every fan, goes right, I am bringing someone new to this stadium next year. We grow by hundred percent. Mm. It's as simple and as easy as that. Is every fan who comes, whether you come as a full season ticket holder, whether you come four or five games, whether you just come one, if you go, actually, I'm bringing someone new with me. Or someone, or one the other thing to say, someone old, someone who used to come and say, look what you've been missing. Come on, come back, come and come and see it. Come and see it. Get on the V-Bus, get on the tram. It's 20 minutes. You, you, you're at the ground. You can have a drink. You can go home. You, you don't even have to drive. You can get here. And it's affordable day out. So if every one of you brings one person new next season, we've grown by 100%. Yeah. And then yeah. if every one of them brings one person, we've grown by 200%. Mm. And if every one of them brings one other person, then we've got to move to a bigger stadium because we've filled it. <laughs> Brilliant. And, 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 it's a, and it's a simple, and it's, you know, it sounds easy in practice, but actually that's my message to everybody. Bring someone new. Mm. Bring someone new with you next year. Just bring someone new, someone random, someone you work with. Come on, why don't you come with us on Sunday? Pay for the ticket if you want. You pay for their ticket. Just say, just get them there because once they're there, they're gonna come back. Nine times out of ten, they're gonna come back to that ground. So it, it, it you know, it, I know it sounds simple and, and it's easy as that, but if every every fan, every fan brings someone new, we double, and every one of them brings someone new, we double again. Mm. And it's all about. It's all about that. It's momentum, isn't it? And if we grow and everybody says positive things about the club, and if you've noticed from our board, every bit of message that we put out in the last 18 months has been a positive message. It's all positive. There is no negativity around the club. And it's rubbing off. Again, it's from the front office, and it's rubbing off onto the staff. It's rubbing off onto the players. It's rubbing off onto you guys. It's all positivity. This is what we're about. Now, it would be utopian if you went into that league next year, won all 23 games, gets to super gets to a playoff and, and gets to Super League. Now imagine that. Now 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 I'm gonna put my proper hat on and go, that would be marvelous. <laughs> However, let's grow slowly but surely. So if we finish eighth next year, we've grown one place. We finish seventh the year after that, we've grown one place. Then sixth, then fifth. And that's you know, slowly but surely, catching up each year, we're going to go forward off the field, on the field, and they both complement each other. Because the team's doing well, more people want to be involved with you. 
If off the if off the field's doing well, more people will come and watch the team. The team respond, they get better. So each each way, it's a symbiotic relationship between off field, on field, mm. and the fans. You guys who are, I will say this, and I think Steve Wilde will always say this: pound for pound, the best fans in rugby league. Absolutely, pound for pound. For what what comes into this club through the supporters' trust, through the um, through the station roaders, through Pride Builder, it's it, all the supporter groups is amazing. Of an no other club's got that because I've had I've been having the conversations and they're all looking at me going, well, you've you know you've got all those groups adding to that adding to that club. Go yeah yeah, and um, you know open frank conversations. No one's got that. Yeah. That's why this this is one of the reasons this club's special. So and bring a mate. That's my job. Bring a mate. I'm going to be like Lord Kitchener on, on a map, me. Bring a mate. You know, I think, bring a Dave, mate. I think, Dave, part of doing this podcast, obviously we like to have a laugh, chat to all these people, but the main point of it is to get a positive message out there. And, I, you know, like we said, a lot of people haven't had a chance to meet you through everything that's gone on. And I spoke to you for an hour or so on the phone setting this up. But I think it's absolutely fantastic. You come into the club on a relatively newly sort of thing, I think said six months, but the positivity you speak about the club and the way you say it is just golden. You know what I mean? Obviously, we all just cannot wait to get the games back on. Sooner they are or late, we can actually be in the grounds to watch it. But like I say, this positive message is what fans want to hear. You know what I mean? It makes it be, some people may have actually forgot about a match day. It's been a long time. And hopefully over these podcasts, listening to people like yourself and the players you had on, and someone going to get a shot. We just want people to remember just how good it is going to the games. It's an affordable, fantastic day out with a great game of rugby in the middle. Sometimes we might get the loss, but that's not all that's not all about. It, you know what I mean? It's about the day out and the product of what we get. And I think you put it over fantastic. Mm. I mean, I'll ask you a question and uh... In, in all sincerity, when you've had good days out at the rugby or, you know, your good days out over the years and you've had a right laugh, <laughs> do you remember the result? Not really, no. I remember some cracking you, days you, out, though. You, you, mentioned your crack, you, meant, you remember your cracking days out. You yeah. might remember the odd top try, 100 metre, full length of the yeah. picture, all that. But actually, in, year, in years, in years in, gone by... You remember the day out, but you'll go, damn it, exactly. that game. you know what I mean? And, and we've all had, we've all had that experience. And I mean, it's great. Don't get me wrong. We're in a professional sport. It's great if you win. The players love it when they win. They train to win. They're elite athletes. They don't train to go, oh, we got beat by six points, but we played well. They train to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, 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 they train to absolutely win. And there's no doubt about that. And I think looking at the squad, looking at the people involved, Stuart and Alan and everybody, Moving forward, I genuinely think that teams will be looking over the shoulder at Swinton. Yeah. Yeah. Swinton is not an easy day out anymore. Anybody comes to Swint, anybody comes to Awood Road, it is not an easy it, it is not an easy day out. We go to travel to any other club, it is not an easy day out. I mean, it's, it's gone under the radar a little bit because last season got got postponed. Yeah, yeah. After, obviously two thirds through. We went to Whitehaven on a bog of a pitch last mm -hmm. January. And won 14 nil. Now, Pete Whitehaven had just come up. Full, they'd won the competition. They were full of the joys of spring. They were, they were bouncing. They got nilled at home. Yeah, yeah. By Swinton, they got nilled. Now, the reality is, we're on, we're, we're the team that does better on harder grounds. We showed that at Witness. You know, with a couple of mistakes, we'd have won that Challenge Cup game. You yeah. know, what I mean, it's a couple of little errors, we'd have won that Challenge Cup game. But we play better on harder grounds. Obviously, we've got a later starting season, which I think will benefit Swinton. We're a very, very fast side. I think, like I say, going to Whitehaven and doing that result like we did, I, don't, I think it's pretty understated. And I know we beat Lee Miners in the Cup. And I know it was a massive score. Mm. And they're a community team who had a go. But the professionalism showed that day, the ruthlessness shown that day by them lads, was, was quite something I thought. I mean, again, it was a, a, a boggy pitch, and we put I think fifty was it fifty six nil or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a big scoreline. It was a big scoreline, and I think and and to be fair to Lee Miners, they didn't play badly. 
They had a they had a right go. Mm. They had a right go. It's just that you know the lads got it together. They got the speed moving. Got the ball moving. I think Butty got about five tries, didn't he? Or four yeah. tries or something. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. You know, he scored quite a lot. And but it was because of the movement of the ball and the way they were moving it in the in the muck and all that. They did really really well. And that was just glimpses. We went to Featherstone away, who have got a virtual full time squad at that time, mm. um, with four players from Leeds. And given up to the last two minutes, we, we were in it. They scored a try in the last minute, didn't they? Um, which the try in the last minute, which exaggerated the scoreline a little bit. But I think they yeah. broke away. If we'd gone in, we were winning. They broke away, they won. Mm. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. And I know we've got that little five minute before each half time where everybody goes, no, don't let one in. You know, so I know all about that. I seen it at Batley and nearly, I was like, oh, what are you doing? You know what I mean? But that's the sort of thing that that's that's the thing of the past that because mm, yeah. of what's been put in place behind the scenes. I'm not gonna say too much, but what's been put in place behind the scenes, that is gonna be a thing of the past moving forward. Yeah, I think with the players that we've brought in as well, we've got that little bit, we've got a few more karma older heads. And it's like as much as um Fairclough was was ace for us, and he's not getting away from it, he was ace. Somebody like Riddy, who's come in now, has got that little bit more experience and that little bit sort of more game management skill where that last five minutes where historically we've, we've always sort of switched off for a minute or rush of blood or whatever. Hopefully that will just calm that down nice and nice and bonny. And I said it in the last podcast and I'll say it again. For me, Ridyard isn't a signing just for this season or next season, it will be four seasons, five seasons time, His what he brings to the table now will stay with them younger lads for the rest of their careers. And that's... Unbelie- Absolutely, and that's why he was a critical signing. Mm. That is why, for me, I mean, I'm, I, I don't do the performance side, that's all Stuart and everything, and, you know, for me, it was like 100%, um, let's go for it. I've met Martin, had a good chat with him, um, absolutely fantastic and his attitude he's not he's I don't know he's 30 plus whatever he is he's he's not come here to go I'll just have a year yeah absolutely not he's come here to make a difference for Swinton Lions mm-hmm. I'll tell you that now without a doubt he's really bought into the ethos of the family ethos of the club he really really has and for me uh he's a critical you know it's that old dead I think um Forsyth as a centre is a tremendous signing. Brooksy in the props, a tremendous signing. The um, Jermaine on the winger, putting pressure on them wingers, he's, you know, he's rapid. He, you know, a tremendous signing. Geronimo, a tremendous signing. Yeah, yeah. But what the one I really, really like, and I think I've watched him in training, is Kobe. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he's young, he's an halfback, he's young. Mm. He, him, he's just sucking up all that knowledge from Rydia. He's sucking it up, sucking it up. But but the kid's got stuck. He, 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 he's got it. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. I was stunned Bradford let him go. Well, they did. I, I think, to be honest, I think we we beat him to the punch. We said, come on, come and play for us. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, the contracts go on and he, he was. He, he was come and play for us, and I mean, he was he was going to be behind Danny Bruffett's Bradford, I mm. think. I think that was the way he was looking. I'm not sure too much about that, but the the reality is, he's an asset. He, he's a really good signing, and I think again, every signing that's come in, like Young Nash from St. Helens, yeah, he's, he's he's really good commitment. He's fantastic. Jordan Brown is coming from, uh, I think he come from Widnes, but he was with Warrington originally. Jordan. He, he, you know, he's got something about him. He, he's, he's committing. Lewis Roberts, which he's coming from Salford. He's, he's had a couple of Super League appearances towards the end of back end of last year. He's come in. He's acquitting, he's acquitting himself really, really well. Mm. These are, I mean, these are a couple of young lads that are just going to learn and get better and get better. And again, homegrown. This is the thing. Anybody out there who wants to play for rugby, the chances are you come to Swinton, we ain't got to sign someone from the... Um, from the NRL competition to replace you, mm. we're developing yeah. what we've got because yeah. that's what we, it's not just about, you could say about finances, whether it's not about that, it's about what we want to deliver as a club. Mm. We want to give 
young homegrown players the opportunity to grow and develop. Now, if they grow and develop and squint and get better, fantastic, we go up the leagues. If they grow and develop and a Super League come, club comes in and says, we really like you, would you like to come and play for some? Swinton ain't going to, we're not going to step in at any young player's way, but we know we've got the pride of knowing that we've developed, helped that player on on his way, which in the, in the same thing, the next young player coming through, Swinton becomes an option where they go, actually, I've seen such and such X, Y, Z, they've gone on. I can get that same development thing from Swinton. And at the same time, we, like you say, we've retained the core. We're adding to that core. People move on. And each each year we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm. And I mean, I, I was talking to a guy the other week who's uh, remained nameless. And the quote he said was, you're going to be the York of Lancashire in the next two years. I'll take that. All right, we'll take that. I'll take that. Compliment, a compliment indeed. Yeah. And we were like, well, well, thank you very much. You know, that, you know, a, play, a fellow who's in the know knows his rugby league, can see what we're doing. And what I really love, no, outside of Swinton, no one's talking about us. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. And, and I think a lot of that comes down to historical stuff or it's, it's Swinton this or mm-hmm. Swinton that. You know, they're all, you know, they've not been in top division since 1992. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I stood. In Station Road, soaking wet through when Warrington got beat 12 10. I still remember it well. I still remember being, I've never been so wet at a rugby league game in my life with my mate. I was, I think, 19 years old, stood there with my coat on, freezing. And then I thought, we got beat. The only time I was colder was when we got beat at Wakefield on a Wednesday night, 12 10. <laughs> Same score, actually, 12 10. I remember it well, but uh, that particular year, I think we knocked on under the Warrington knocked on under the posts at the end, but. I know, uh, funny enough, um, someone said to me the other week, he said, if Warrington drew Swinton in the Challenge Cup, who would you want to win? <laughs> and I said, Swinton. And I said, Swinton straight away. And they went, turn coat, you've been a Warrington fan all your life. I said, no. I said, I might be a fan, but I'm part of Swinton. And that's different. Yeah. And that's what Perfect. I actually said. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's actually true. It's a true, it's an absolutely true occasion, true answer. Mm. Uh, and I actually said that. I mean, um, have you got your new shirts, by the way? No, I'm a bit fat at the moment, so there's no point. They're a bit slim fit in these shirts. So uh, it's... it's oh, yeah. Do you know what? Just get the next size up. Yeah, but they're then good. it's about four mile long, isn't it? I look like... I look like... Uh, you know, no, the no, they're a bit bare, these ones. I'll tell you, because I, I bought four last week. I've, I've, my kids oh. have both got new Swinton shirts. Oh, and, right. uh, my kids have got them. My next door neighbour, I got him one. Because he gave me that, that shirt, that show before... That um, right. I got him, I got him a new one, and I had to get him the next size up because he's a, uh, he's a big lad, you know what I mean. So uh, he, he got him the next size up, and then I got one for another friend of mine. So um, they're all right actually. Um, yeah, and I think I we actually love, I actually love the blue one. I love the yellow one as well. I think it's, uh, it's something different for us, yeah. and I think it, it, it's. Uh, I really like. I really the when they they look so obviously when you see them on a card and they're being designed and everything, it. They look good, but they look for sometimes they don't look as good when you see them in the fabric. Mm. But I always do. They were, they're absolutely tremendous. That away tremendous shirts. That away kit for me, I love it. I think it's really, really nice. The colours on that, and I, I, I do. And I mean, I everybody that knows me knows I love an outlandish outfit, right? Um, so I'm probably fashion wise, I'm probably not not the best to speak to, but. I absolutely, I think it, it just, it looks a little bit, it's got a touch of the Papua New Guinea about it. It's got the the, the nod to the heritage, the old um, sort of town colours and all that. I, I do, I really like that. And I think yeah, it's really it's nice. A, I mean, again, when we're doing kits, I think people think sometimes it's like, oh, they, they just have a thing. Actually, we went long and hard into that to say, what can we do? Obviously, once we won World Cup of kits, we said, right, that's coming back out. That yeah, yeah. It's got to come out. It's a, it's a, it's an iconic kit. That's coming back out, no doubt. But when the away one, we really thought long and hard about that and and doing something different with it. Yeah. And 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 I, again, I do think it's really, really, really smart. I think it's, yeah. I think it's marvelous. I, mean, I, I can remember um, when I was at the club a few years ago. Um, I can remember having a chat with a chairman at the time, John Kidd, and I said to him, I said, for your away kit, you need to do something different that people are going to want to buy. And I, at the time, um, Dortmund were playing in luminous yellow. And I said, why don't you have a look at Dortmund's kit? 
luminous yellow and black and bring that in to, uh, for the home kit. Anyway, the, uh, the away kit, sorry. And he, they ended up going for like um, almost like a miner's kit, like a mustard yellow. But, but I was trying to get, if you do something that's absolutely standout and something that's different, people are going to buy it. And I think that's what we've got with the away kit this season. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, it, and, it, and it's been done, again, long and hard. It wasn't sort of a 10-minute meeting. Yeah, we'll do that. The, the, the number of things that's coming, the number of designs that we were we were looking at, and then we eventually we 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 settled on that one. We settled on that one, and it was a uh, it was actually it was originally a, it was a big chunky red V, and I said no, we'll have two little red V's on there. It'll it'll break it up. It'll look really smart, and and I think I even brought kids into the the design studio and said to the kids, what do you think? What do you like on these? What do you think? Because it's not no good. I'm 47, 48 next month. This is let's have a look what the kids like. You know what I mean? So, and that, that's a lot of the things that we're doing. The consultation we're doing right across the board. It's yeah. not just asking to our traditional fan base. It's actually asking kids who don't come say, "What would make you come to Swinton? What, 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 what would you make you come and watch rugby league?" Because it's not just a Swinton issue. It's a rugby league issue. What, yeah. what would make you come and watch a rugby league game mm-hmm. and stuff like that? So we've been doing all that type of stuff as well, and really, really some really good positive uh, support about what we've been doing. You yeah. know, so again. I asked about the kits because I, I really like them. I think both of them are really smart. And I think you, you get from year to year, don't you, certain certain clubs and you think, God, you know, some of the kits that come out. But actually, right across the board, some of the kits I've seen this year are really, really smart. And it is, I think people are starting to think about it. It's, it, it. Again, someone's wearing that shirt out and about and they, someone might say, what's that shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and you know, and, and you can tell them and you tell them what that shirt is and, and stuff like that. And I think... It, I think it's really, really important. Yeah, my, my little lad loves his football shirts. Loves his football shirts. He's got all sorts. He's got um, Juventus, Dortmund, United, um, Everton. He's, he's got loads and loads of kits. And what if we can have a kit that's stand out? There's no reason that kids from other teams, other clubs, other sports don't buy our gear. And that's absolutely. I, t- I tell you, one of the best-selling kits of recent times was the Barcelona Catalan shirt. Mm. My, yeah. my, my lad's got it you know the, the Barcelona Catalan shirt went down really 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 well yeah. um, I mean again and, and it comes down it's, it's that's transcending across sports across different communities and everything mm. and your shirt is really important to, can be a really important vehicle to do that and I think everything every bit of branding that we look at it's really really you know that, that type of stuff's really really important so it's good to get your feedback on that actually because as um Actually, I've not had anybody give me any negative feedback yet, but no. I don't go on Facebook much and I don't go on to the social media as much. But I mean, I'm sure. I think as well, with like... the, with the, sorry, with the, with the setup we've got at the minute, it's easy to buy the shirts, isn't it? The website yeah. and you can get them delivered straight away. Very easy. I think that Very we had a thing where it was taking it was taking a few weeks to order a shirt, which right. no, I know next it must have been now. how it had to be. But yeah, like I say, now you can you can go online, order your shirt, and they come through the post, no trouble. So yeah, next you know, it's a good setup. Yeah. I ordered one on last Friday because um, I'd missed one off my list. They ordered one on Friday and it arrived this morning. Mm. And that's yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. So that's actually next working day. So I can't, uh, yeah. you know, you know, no problem no problem with that. But again, the more people that get a shirt, the more they wear it out, mm. the more people start to see that Swint. Who's that? That Swinton. Yeah. What do they do? Play rugby league. And it's all that red, it's all that sort of stuff around the shirts. And, and then we go back to what I said before, bring a mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You bring bring a mate. I mean, when when one of the first games I went last year, my lad goes, Can I have a scarf? Yeah, go on. Got my yeah. scarf. It's, he walks around with his swing scarf on. Brilliant. That's it. So. You know what I mean? So it's it's little things like that. So even this merchandising, yes, it's great for the club because it generates an income for the club, and that's fantastic. But at the same time, it's actually got a wider vision to that. It actually shows people what we're about, and where we are, and I think those type of things can can really, really help grow, help grow the club. Because again, we've got all these concepts, we've got all these ideas. We can't do it on our own. We need to do this as a collective. Everybody got, and again, at the moment, everybody is swimming upstream. Everybody's going the same direction in this club, whether it's be fans. Again, I reiterate the fans, the boardroom, the players, the staff everybody is going in the same direction and I think it's starting to show I'd like to think it is, I think, you know, we've had some really positive feedback and positive messages over the last few months from people, especially when there's been no rugby and we're in the biggest pandemic in 100 years 
that actually we, we, we've kept relevant and we've kept in people's minds all the time. Yeah. I think that's really, really important. And I mean, one of the things, this is nothing to do with rugby, but when we did the Wood Street Mission stuff before Christmas, the donations were phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal what came from our fan base to make sure that young kiddies around Manchester and Salford got a Christmas present. Brilliant. Now, I can't remember how many there was. It was unbelievable. It filled the big bow of uh, the white Lindsay's pub. What's it called? White White Swap. It filled the back room and it was yeah. White Swap. There were so many bags. I was astounded. And we had to, it was all taken down to Wood Street. But the thing is, when, when I was talking to Wood Street, and we, we've made them our charity, the, they're going to be our charity for this year. Um, and I think the fact that they make sure that over 3,000 young kids get a present at Christmas, and we've put a massive chunk from Swinton Lions fan base to that, that, that's got to fill us, again, using a lion analogy, but that's got to fill us with a sense of pride yeah. to do that. Very other, yeah. very other, I mean, Wood Street Mission were absolutely astounded with what got brought in mm. from, yeah. one, from one group. I mean, and to be fair to Salford as well, um, to my colleague, the, the lad at Salford, Neil, Neil Blackburn, he, do, he made sure a load was donated from Salford as well. Because I rung him up and said, "Can you make? Sure, can you get some from Salford, guys?" And he did. And you know, fair play. You know, just to make sure that them kids got something at Christmas. That yeah. this, that's just massive. Brilliant. Right. So time's up for us now on this one. Um, one thing I will say, Damien, is thank you ever so much for coming on. Um, we no definitely, definitely have you on again. Um, so no yeah, if you if you're willing to come on, we'd love to have you. Um, Hearing what you've got to say has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, the passion that you speak with, the pride that you have in the badge, in the club, in being part of this amazing 150-odd year journey has been been brilliant. So thank you very much. Um, Welcome, guys. No worries. Thank you. Hey, Go on, sorry, mate. I think just to add to what Barney said, totally agree. Like I say, the enthusiasm, the positivity, and like I say, hopefully these podcasts just remind people we're coming back, you know what I mean? The game will be back at some point. Because yeah. I, for one, I just can't wait. I can't wait to meet up with everybody we go with and, you know, the day out, the game, everything. People are missing it. Right. And like I say, the positivity you speak with, everybody just wants to hear it because that's what people want. And like I say, thanks for coming on, Damien. Good chatting with you. And hopefully we'll see you at a game. Shut up! We've got literally seconds left. Right. Steve right. McCormack's on our next podcast. Yeah. Steve Fantastic. from Rugby League Cares is on with us on our next podcast. Right. Thank Brilliant. you very much, everybody. See you later. Love you all. Can't wait to get back. Take it easy.